This is the 2023 Kia Telluride. There are some changes to the way it looks, but fortunately, Kia hasn't messed with a successful formula. A lot of space, good looks, terrific value. Get in and bring some friends. We got room. It's time for Family Wheels. As we roll off, a small ask. Give Family Wheels a like. Your likes mean a lot to the success of this channel. And by subscribing, you can click the little bell to be notified when a review drops. Thoughts about this vehicle? Leave a comment. Thanks. Many of the differences between the Telluride and the Palisade are small. However, two are large. And one of them is exterior styling. You're not mistaking one for the other. Palisade has a really big dropped uh, grill up front and the Telluride here is much more muted, smoothed off look. Both have been given a styling refresh for 2023. That's going to be entirely subjective and up to you. The other big difference is price. If you think that Kia is the lower priced little brother of Hyundai, uh, you'd be wrong. The Telluride costs more than the Palisade, several thousand dollars at each trim level. We seldom talk about handling and a three row SUV, but guess what? It's not bad. They really do sweat the details about suspension tuning and getting the, the big beast around corners. And it shows it's a very pleasant vehicle to drive. And again, another reason why, price wise, it punches well above its weight. So we're not loaded up with seven passengers and a trailer for obvious reasons, but the handling is excellent for a vehicle this big. Let's see if the Telluride has pep. Yeah, it's got plenty of pep. You can do fine on long trips, uh, on the freeway, over the mountains, see how the brakes. That's good, confidence inspiring, not grabby, not mushy. We have 5,000 pounds of towing capability, about, what, 2,200 kilograms? And here on the X-Line specification, as well as the X-Pro, we have tow mode. There are no engine alternatives for the Telluride. There is no hybrid, and there's no four-cylinder option. The Hyundai Kia Group make a four-cylinder, two-and-a-half-liter turbo that puts out only 10 fewer horsepower than the engine here but it's got way more torque. It's got 311 pound-feet of torque, and I, I wonder why they wouldn't put that in as a more economical alternative. Let's take it down our neighborhood bumpy road, see how it handles the potholes and patches and speed bumps. It does a very good job indeed. This mid-brown interior with the black accents just comes off beautifully, and I'm usually not a fan of fake finishes, but here we have the look of open pore wood, and it's good. And the farther up the trim list you go, the more niceties you get, although some of the lower specs really do have uh, lots of features as well. But here we have, for instance, heated and ventilated seats. It's available on some of the lower trims, wireless charging, USB ports everywhere. And by the way, all but one of the USB ports is type C. That's the more modern and faster charging rate kind. Two digital panels, one for the gauge cluster, the other for HVAC and infotainment, are mounted in one housing. Kia offers a useful selection of hard buttons and touchscreen control. And Kia's sometimes confusing two layers of soft buttons in the center is not used in the Telluride. At the higher trim levels of the Telluride, you get an excellent color head-up display, does it all, including a nice little trick where you get warnings about something in your uh, quarter vision area at the rear. There are two sunroofs. This one for the front seat occupants uh, opens. Behind, there's a second one that uh, does not open. Of note though, they both have power sunshades. Sound is by Harman Kardon. It is premium. By the way, uh, Harman Kardon is just one of many audio companies uh, owned by a Korean enterprise, just like Hyundai and Kia.
Telluride is what I would call a real deal three row SUV. That is, it's not cramped. Behind me, a rear facing child seat, that's the kind that takes up the most space. I'm 5 feet 11 inches tall, 180 centimeters, and here in the front passenger seat, there's plenty of room between my knees and the glove box door. There's plenty of room in the second row of the Telluride. In fact, I've got the seats adjusted as far back as they'll go. And I've still got decent room between my knees and the back of the front passenger seat. Things have opened up a lot more for the people in the third row. In fact, you can fit an adult there if you push the second row of seats forward. Also, they are adjustable for rake. And being captain's chairs, we have an armrest on this side. There are many niceties in the back. At this spec, we get heated and ventilated second row seats. Plus, there are oodles of USB connections, type C, in fact, in the sides of the front two seats. Also, the people in the back get their own USB connections. More about the small dissimilarities between the Telluride and the Palisade. The Palisade has a really useful, good-sized purse bin under the center console. Telluride doesn't have it. Uh, there's a little pocket over there and none over here. That's our look at the 2023 Kia Telluride. I think it continues to offer lots of space, lots of luxury, well above its price point, and decent performance. But what do you think? Leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, and thanks for subscribing. I'm Richard Detman, and I'll see you next time on Family Wheels.